Top Daulat hari ketiga hari ini juga menyaksikan pasukan keselamatan mengadakan kepungan di laut dan di darat. The Ram family also said it will not resort to violence. About 200 to 400 followers some armed are currently surrounded by Malaysian forces in Sabah. Risikan mengesyaki kumpulan tersebut sedang bersembunyi. In February 2013, a group of around 200 armed militants led by Raja Muda Agbimuddin Kiram, entered Lahad Datu and occupied a village. The Malaysian authorities saw this as a direct challenge to their sovereignty and national security. The militants refused to leave the area, leading to a tense standoff. The origins of the crisis can be traced back to the unresolved territorial disputes between Malaysia and the Philippines over parts of Sabah. The followers of the self-proclaimed Sulu Sultanate believed that the region rightfully belonged to them, citing historical claims. Operasi Daulat concluded on March 24, 2013, with the Malaysian security forces successfully eliminating the militant threat lead by VAT-69 commando. The Malaysian government reaffirmed its sovereignty over the region and emphasized its commitment to maintaining peace and security it is an important chapter in Malaysia's history, showcasing the nation's efforts to safeguard its sovereignty and maintain internal peace and security. I am Datok Rashid bin Harun. I am a former police commissioner in Sabah. My name is Ibrahim Hokan, retired Sergeant 112553. My name is Salahan Wahab, retired Sergeant Major 95069. The 69 Commando, also known as Very Able Troopers, 69 or VAT-69, is an elite multitasking special forces unit of the Royal Malaysia Police. The mission of VAT-69 Commando is to conduct high-risk tasks such as counter-terrorism, hostage rescue, intelligence gathering and counter-insurgency within the borders of Malaysia. Former Sabah Police Commissioner Dato Rashid Harun said, The issue of invasion still exists even though the security forces managed to restore security and increase monitoring not only in Kampung Tanduo, but the entire Eastern Sabah Security Zone, or AS Zone. For him, the sovereignty of the country needs to be defended. Sovereignty means being independent. The meaning of independence for me is freedom from all elements of colonialism. Freedom from the thought. Freedom from the behavior. We should be proud to be a sovereign country. His involvement with the Royal Malaysian Police, or PDRM, started from the bottom. His commitment and loyalty to the country make him a reference for police members. I have served since 1975 with PDRM, starting with the rank of Matamata, until I retired at the age of 60 with the rank of Police Commissioner. I served proudly for 42 years. During the communist insurgency era, VAT-69 Commando played a crucial role in supporting the Malaysian government's efforts to counter the communist threat. During the height of the communist era when I joined the police, the communists were active in their operations to threaten the sovereignty and peace of this beloved country. After two years in the service, I joined the Jungle Police Squad and then I voluntarily joined VAT-69. When I passed the initial test, I was then absorbed into the 69 Commando Squad and participated in all operations as part of the VAT-69. As diplomatic efforts to resolve the standoff with the militants failed, the Malaysian government launched Operasi Daulat. The Malaysian Armed Forces, including the Malaysian Army and Royal Malaysian Police, launched an offensive against the militants in Lahad Datu. The operation involved ground forces, naval support and aerial reconnaissance. The goal was to neutralize the militants and bring an end to the standoff. During Operation Daulat, which I was directly involved in, it was known as Operation Sulu during that time frame. During the Sulu operation, I held the position of Deputy Director for the Department of Internal Security and Public Order, KDNKA, Special Operations Forces, where I was responsible for two elite units under PDRM, the VAT-69 Commando and the Special Action Unit, UTK. In a world marked by uncertainty and geopolitical complexities, one concept stands as a pillar of a nation's strength, military strategy. 
That 69, Commando's strategic prowess is the shield that safeguards, an embodiment of dedication securing Malaysia's future. In every operation that is carried out, we will be given a mission. In VAT 69 commandos, we move in groups of six people, and sometimes, based upon, we move together as many as 12 people. Retired Sergeant Major Salehan Wahab. We as commandos, we must be strategic and plan ahead. We are well trained in jungle and urban warfare. Tato Rashid Harun. We are aware of the danger that we will face. But we are so equipped with knowledge, lessons, and what we have learned along with the blazing spirit of wanting to return to the families. That is what causes us to strive to succeed in the operations so that we can return to our families. For every defender, the call to serve often comes with the agonizing decision of leaving behind their loved ones. This sacrifice becomes the foundation of their unwavering dedication. Families share in the sacrifice, standing steadfast as pillars of support for those who courageously defend the nation. The bond between them strengthens through each moment of absence. Retired Sergeant Ibrahim Hoken. The longest operation I had was for a month to a month and a half. Retired Sergeant Major Salehan Wahab. I will not tell my family where, how long I will be gone, because frankly, even I am not sure how long would it take for the operation to be completed. Coming home after a deployment is an indescribable feeling. Seeing their family again renews the warrior's spirit and reminds them about why they serve. Reunions become a testament to the enduring power of love and commitment. The joy of returning to loved ones rekindles the flame that sustains these defenders. Working as a VAT-69 commando, we must mentally strong, as well as the wife and kids. God willing, nothing will happen. Our job is to earn a living for our wife and children. Wish us the best. In the VAT-69 commando's history, there emerged a moment that pushed them to the brink of fear. It was a challenge unforeseen, testing their mettle in ways they had never imagined. Retired Sergeant Ibrahim Hoken. It was a terrifying operation during Operation Tanduo because of the danger that the enemy's weapons possess and we are due to enter the enemy's stronghold. Retired Sergeant Major Salehan Wahab. I have nothing to fear because I am confident of the knowledge I have, the knowledge of urban warfare and the knowledge of jungle warfare. For that 69 Commando, each mission is a distinct call, beckoning them to navigate through treacherous terrain and uncertainty, their focus as sharp as a blade. In the realm of high-risk operations, precision is paramount. VAT 69's meticulous planning ensures that every risk taken is a measured step toward success. For Datuk Rashid, leaders of elite forces bear the heavy responsibility of making split-second strategic decisions Decisions that can tip the scales between success and failure. I have to take care of my men so that they are always safe and they are always physically and mentally prepared so that they can be with me in carrying out a mission. The burdens of leadership often test one's mental and emotional limits. Leaders must remain steadfast and unwavering, providing stability in times of uncertainty. Almost 1,000 officers under my command. My job is to motivate them in facing the enemy and overcoming whatever obstacles they will face. In the face of adversity, Datuk Rashid become a source of unwavering encouragement. His presence calms nerves and fuels determination. My officers are very dedicated in carrying out whatever orders that are given to defeat the enemy without injuries and unwanted things to happen on our side. Within VAT-69 Commando, he recognized that the safety of his officers is not just a priority, but a sacred duty. Safety-driven leaders anticipate potential risks, taking proactive measures to prevent hazards before they escalate. It is my responsibility as a leader. I have to think about my own safety and also the safety of my officers. Actions and decisions to be made require strategic thinking and strategic planning of the highest level.
like in sports but for us we play with the lives and safety of officers under my command and the safety of the public we have a responsibility for the decisions made as an ASCOM commander navigate the delicate balance between fulfilling higher commands expectations and ensuring the well-being of their officers a task that requires astute judgment the most difficult moment was when I was appointed as the ASCOM commander, Eastern Sabah Security Command, which controls 10 districts in Eastern Sabah known as the Eastern Sabah Security Zone, AS Zone. The components in ASCOM are the Army, Air Force, Navy, Police alongside the Special Forces, Marines, PGA, Criminal Investigation Unit, GGK, Pascal. With all these units, it makes my task very challenging. How do I want to give orders to army troops? How do I want to give orders to special forces that are not under PDRM? Beneath the stoic exterior, he grapple with sorrowful moments. He silently shoulder the emotional toll of their responsibilities. Sad moments include the loss of comrades, a wound that leaves an indelible mark. Datuk Rashid often masks his emotions to safeguard the team's morale. His grief remains a private struggle, a testament to their selfless dedication. I have been through moments where my officer were injured. My officer died during the battle. I had to go through that incident. My advice to the leader, don't be moody, no matter what happened. For example, don't show out sadness. Don't get angry when officers make mistakes during operation. We need to correct the mistake if the battle causes injury and loss of life. We shall not discourage the officer involved. Retired Sergeant Major Salehan Wahab Perspective uncovered the intricate planning that underpinned Operation Daulat. Meticulous attention to detail would determine the mission's outcome. Operation Daulad is divided into several parts. The first part we will receive information when we are based in Ulu Kinta. Then we boarded a plane to Tawau. When in Tawau we entered Felda Sahabat. While at Maitek our team was briefed by Datuk Rashid about what happened. After being briefed by Datuk Rashid, Sergeant Major Salehan Wahab deployed to the operation area. Ten people as well as I were deployed to the operation area. My task with the team is to monitor the area near the enemy camp. Tracker tasks within VAT-69 require a unique set of skills. Operatives must become one with their environment, deciphering nature's clues to trace the elusive path. Retired Sergeant Ibrahim Hoken. I was assigned as a tracker in a group of six people. The tracker's task is always on the front, and it is job to find the path that needs to be tracked, guided by the map. When we get to the destination, I need to read the position and send it to Mr. Salihan, who is a Symboyan. Then he will send my coordinates to Matek, so they know the position based on the map. The strategic commanders meticulously assess the situation and devise plans that maximize their advantage. The diversity of tasks within the team showcases the meticulous orchestration required to achieve success. Tato Rashid Harun. Each team consists of six people with different skills, consisting of trackers, petrol commanders, communications and medical experts, petrol TYC and explosives experts. If combined, these six people will be 12 people. Enemy territory is a labyrinth of danger zones. VAT-69 operatives navigate this treacherous landscape with heightened senses, avoiding detection at every turn. Retired Sergeant Major Salehan Wahab. On March 1st, 2013 at 3 in the morning, we deployed near the enemy's area. When we reached the enemy's area, which was about 500 meters away, we stayed put in that area. We made a perimeter and built a defense near the enemy's area. Then at 9.30 in the morning we saw a glimpse of the enemy to scouting their territory. As they were scouting, they confronted our team and alerted their campmates of our presence. 
After they gathered their team, they challenged our team, consisting of VAT-69 commandos. Then they tried to chase us away in Sulu, saying, This is our area. Get out of our area. In the midst of gunfights, VAT-69 commandos' operatives navigate a maelstrom of chaos. Adrenaline courses through their veins, sharpening their focus on the task at hand. Their ability to think strategically in the face of danger is the cornerstone of their gunfight tactics. Retired Sergeant Ibrahim Hoken. During the briefing, we were told that the enemy had numerous and advanced weaponry. That is when we realized this operation is between life and death. It depends on luck. If we are fast, we will shoot them first. But if they are fast, we will get shot. The operation was challenging for me because we already knew them and their strength, but we went to fight regardless. We don't know our fate whether we will go home or not. This operation was very worrying for me. Retired Sergeant Major Salehan Wahab. On March 1st, Inspector Zul, who was a good friend of mine, was on my left approximately 10 meters away, and he got shot by the enemy. I believe he was shot by an enemy sniper. I felt low for a moment. An officer and a friend who was very close to me got shot. I instead became furious, and my fighting spirit increased. We continued our struggle. Destroy the enemy in front of us. That is our motto in VAT-69 until today. Retired Sergeant Ibrahim Hoken. During the gunfight battle, we have no idea what happened. After the fight ended, then we were informed that some of our friends were gone. When I asked, who's gone? My comrade just replied, he's gone, he's gone. There was also another friend of mine who was injured in the battle. He was shot in the chest, but was managed to be saved by the team. Even the most formidable forces possess vulnerabilities. In war, weaknesses can be exploited, turning the tables on those who believe themselves invulnerable. Datuk Rashid Harun. We want to arrest him, but the informant told us that the person we wanted to arrest has mystic invulnerability. At the time of the incident, my officer was in a good position to open fire if something happened. But he said he could not do that, and said to me, Sir, if anything happens, please open fire. I had no choice, so I did what I had to do when the situation was desperate, so when the enemy shot, so I shot back. In the crucible of conflict, friendships among soldiers are forged with intensity. The camaraderie born from shared experiences becomes a beacon of strength. When a friend falls in battle, their sacrifice takes on a profound meaning. The memories shared, the laughter and the unspoken bonds become cherished legacies. As soldiers tread the path of war, the yearning to return to their families becomes a wellspring of strength. The call of family acts as a guiding star, leading them back. Retired Sergeant Major Salehan Wahab. I'm sure we'll get home, because we have been trained to survive in any situation, and with the knowledge that has been learned, God willing, with the prayers of our children and wife, with the prayers of Malaysians, we are confident that we will return home safely. But we have to be disciplined during the operation. This contributes to our success. In the complex arena of warfare, intelligence is the cornerstone of strategic planning. It provides a clear picture of the enemy's capabilities and intentions, guiding commanders in devising effective strategies. The quest for intelligence is an art form in itself. Datuk Rashid Harun. Whatever operation is about to be carried out, the most important thing besides the efficiency of the team, we also need to take into account the efficiency of intelligence. Only with good intelligence, then the operation will be effective. We know who our enemy is, their strength, the strength of their weaponry, their spirit, 
When are they home? What are their weaknesses? How to raid them when they are at home? We need to have good intelligence. Where is their house? How many people are in their house? If we break into the house, if there is any children in the house who might get injured if we attack the house, whatever in the operation we need, only good intelligence that will make the operation successful. Amidst the demands of work and command, being a present husband and father remains paramount. Family serves as an anchor of support and love. Balancing dedication to duty with family's needs often involves making sacrifices. The commitment to serving both country and loved ones calls for making thoughtful decisions. Datuk Rashid Harun. I forbid my wife to contact me because she doesn't know when I am under work pressure. I don't want a bad atmosphere to arise regarding my relation with my wife and family. So my wife won't contact me, neither do my kids. Retired Sergeant Ibrahim Hoken. My wife is quite understanding with my job. Wherever the task I am instructed to go, I will leave supplies, especially money. My wife is a very independent person. As far as a little fever and pain, my wife will not inform me. She didn't want me to feel depressed, so the wife will manage everything herself. Stepping into the realm of covert operations requires unmatched dedication. The commitment to secrecy extends to the point where even the closest family members remain unaware of the missions being carried out. Datuk Rashid Harun. In every VAT-69 commando operation or in the Criminal Investigation Department D8 section is indeed focused on the secrecy of the operation. We can't tell the wife and children. They don't know where I'm going involving a difficult operation. Often they complain why you can't tell them. Retired Sergeant Ibrahim Hoken. I can't tell my family about the secret operation. Sometimes I also don't know the operation information that will be given. Sometimes even my family and I don't know when I will come home. I have to wait until my task is completed. Datuk Rashid Harun. There are actually many policemen who sacrifice their lives while serving. People don't know what their job is. Only the employer knows and the people don't. All operations are confidential. Many police officers adhere to secrecy. In the midst of operations, the special forces face isolation. The absence of communication with family compels them to find camaraderie and support among their fellow comrades. Not all operating locations can be contacted. Sometimes when in the jungle, we cannot be contacted because the location does not allow. Retired Sergeant Major Salehan Wahab. During the communist era in 1983 to the year 2000, we had no chance to contact our wives. Communication tools are only provided by the government for operational information or news. The family become unsung heroes. They step into the role of guardians, shouldering the responsibilities of their homes and families while their husbands serve. Balancing multiple roles becomes a daily challenge. These women manage parenting, household tasks, and provide emotional support with unwavering dedication. Retired Sergeant Ibrahim Hoken. My wife is a very strong and resilient person. She wants me to focus on my career. She will take care of my children. It's only during the Tanduo operation which worried her a little bit, but the other operations didn't worry her too much. Retired Sergeant Major Salehan Wahab. She understands my tasks very well. She will wish me a safe trip and a safe return while carrying out my duties. I understand behind the tears of letting me go, but my responsibility to the country needs to be fulfilled. Families bear the weight of heartfelt anticipation. While they yearn for their loved one's return, the uncertainty surrounding the when and where magnifies the emotional journey. Datuk Rashid Harun. Most of the time my wife doesn't know where I'm going. I do not tell her in detail. But the news about my operation will come out on television. She will follow the progress of my operation through the news on TV1 or TV2. For children, waiting for their father's return is an exercise in patience and anticipation. His embrace holds the comfort of a warm blanket, a longing that grows with each passing day. 
My kids sometimes complain too. Other people's fathers are with their children, but not mine. My wife is always the one who calmed the children down because my children don't know about my career. Even the teacher at school asked the children what I do because I was often not at home. In the face of challenges, prayers offer solace. They serve as a touchstone to the bigger picture, extending comfort and a wellspring of hope that propels families onward. They are not alone. There are other souls with them. Through the prayers of children, wives and parents, these are the other souls that are with my officers. This will strengthen the soul of each of my officers who are fighting for the country determined to return home. What are they fighting for? Just to go home to the family, meet the children, wives and parents. The weight of loss is palpable. Hearts ache in the absence of their husband, father, and the grief they experience reflects the profound depth of their love. Retired Sergeant Major Salehan Wahab. I feel touched by the widows and children whose fathers have died while defending the country. There are families who live in hardship when the head of their family dies in defense of our beloved country. Retired Sergeant Ibrahim Hokan. I feel a great blow to us officers who are still alive. Because they fought for their country and their families lost their place of dependence with young children. We try to help the widows and children of fallen fighters as much as we can. But our help is limited. Organizations and association extend a helping hand. Through financial assistance, counseling and guidance, they provide essential support to these families, helping them navigate the challenges ahead. Datuk Rashid Harun. Policemen have an association in helping the families, but the association is bound by the association's constitution. There are criteria that avoid helping some members. My initiative to establish Amazing Camp Legacy using my own money. 10% of the business revenue of this camp through the programs that we conducted, like motivational talks, recreational programs and training, will be donated to veteran members and widows in need. Protecting sovereignty is a testament to our heritage. It ensures that the sacrifices of those who came before us are respected and the visions they nurtured remain vibrant. It is not easy to make a country sovereign. A lot of blood and tears will be shed to make the country sovereign. The fate of the nation and its sovereignty rests not only on the shoulders of forces such as the VAT 69, but also on the shoulder of each and every citizen. This responsibility is undoubtedly the most important that duty that we carry in service to our nation. Retired Sergeant Major Salehan Wahab. Give encouragement and support to the security forces. Like moral support is enough. Retired Sergeant Ibrahim Hokan. Sovereignty must be guarded and defended by the people as well as the security forces. Datuk Rashid Harun. For me, sovereignty is aimed at the sovereignty of our beloved country. We should be proud that we live in a sovereign country. A good citizen will not bring harm to a nation, and they will not stand by the sidelines when that nation is harmed as well. It does not take much to be a citizen that this nation can be proud of. The Rukun Nagara stands as a wonderful guide to show us what it is truly needed to be upstanding citizens of Malaysia. This awareness needs to be the responsibility of everyone to propagate, especially to the younger generation. This holds true as our history grows and many of the sacrifices made are being forgotten as time goes on. This AI-powered radio documentary was produced by Azrul Izwan Arifin, Kartik Ganasan and Rosniwati Mohamed Zaki.